I was born and raised in a small town in Southern Oregon. And I was a good kid in school. I grew up in a normal middle class family. Um, I got great grades. I was really active in sports and I even graduated a year early. I was accepted into Oregon State University and I had my dorm room already assigned and I was really excited to move up to Corvallis. But that summer I got pregnant by my boyfriend and I had to make a real tough decision whether I was going to keep my baby and unenroll from university or get an abortion and keep it all a secret. And that was a really tough summer for me. After I had the baby, I had some friends that had gone up to U of O to go to college, and they had an extra room in one of their apartments. It was at that time that I met a boy or a guy who pretended um, to take interest in me. I really thought he liked me and we got along really well. He was really funny and charming and he had a nice car and he, he always picked up the tab, he had nice clothes. He told me he was a record producer, that he had a band um, up in Portland, and that's why he frequently went out of town. There's a saying that says, when you take a child by the hand, you take the mother by the heart. And I really think that's what happened for me, because I had this new little girl and this man who showed this desperate attention towards her, like he wanted to really help make this family that I really wanted for my daughter. And he invited me to move in with him after about six months of dating, and I was really excited. And I brought him down to Southern Oregon to meet my family and everything seemed fine until we arrived in Las Vegas. He said we were moving there because that was the entertainment capital of the world and being a record producer and having um, a band that that's where they were going to get the most gigs and the most jobs and that's where his job was leading him. So I desperately uh, wanted to go with him, to be with him and, and to start this family that, that he promised me. He pulled up to an escort service and he said, this is how it works in Vegas. I've spent a lot of money to get you here. I put first and last on an apartment. I filled your fridge up with food and you're gonna need to get, earn that money back. And I felt, I felt trapped. I felt like, um, how am I gonna get out of this? And you didn't know if you were gonna live or die. You didn't know what he was gonna do or what he was capable of. And, so it's, it was really scary. I can remember just running through the casino thinking, like, these people don't even have a clue what's going on. They're just, you know, cha-ching, cha-ching, Las Vegas, yay! And they're doing all this stuff, and I'm, I'm running for my life. I'm running from a man that has forced me into doing things that I didn't want to do. When you have, um, trafficker that's waiting at home with your child and says if you don't bring home $1,500 you're going to find your daughter out on the corner. I think I was probably more frightened to go home than I was to be in the room because if you got robbed it was your fault for being stupid. Um, if you got raped it was your fault for not watching your back. Anything that happened to you was typically your fault and you incurred more punishment for allowing those things to happen to you. So it made you always walk in fear of your trafficker. I'm Rebecca Bender and I'm a survivor of sex trafficking. I lived in a community where no services existed and I realized very quickly I couldn't possibly be the only survivor who lived in a small town. At that time I was finishing getting my degree online and so it suddenly hit me one day. If I can get a master's degree online, surely I can mentor girls online. And with that we founded Rebecca Bender Ministries. We developed an online curriculum to help survivors of sex trafficking regardless of where they live. They'll, they're now able to log in and receive one-on-one -on -one mentoring using innovative technology like Skype and Zoom. Um, we have an online discussion forum and homework classes, really just trying to help survivors um, be all that they were created to be. We want to come alongside them, partner with career coaches and life coaches and other survivor leaders that can mentor them towards their future. 
Everyone was created for greatness, and we want to help pull that out of survivors. We want to help them give them an opportunity to look at, into what they're created for. You know, when you're being trafficked, you're not given the opportunity to explore all of your talents and abilities. You're used for one thing. And our organization really tries to help women figure out what it is that they're created to do. One of the other things that Rebecca Bender Ministries does is we have a speakers team that equips first responders all over the U.S. We train over 6,100 professionals a year. Medical service providers, emergency room doctors, paramedics, law enforcement, SVU, FBI, faith-based communities, and advocates within any service. Um, it's a real honor to be able to help people understand what sex trafficking looks like in their community and give them tools and steps to take once they suspect exploitation exists with someone they're working with. One of the most impactful things um, that we do in our ministry is seeing, seeing women go from victim to survivor to leader. When we see girls, um, when we see girls get their dream job, that's what does it for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm Rebecca Bender. I'm a survivor of sex trafficking, but I'm more than just my story. We want to help men and women go after all that God has created them to be. At RBM, we want to change the mindset of a culture and let people know that their past doesn't have to define nor determine their destiny.